Hey, good morning friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. I mean, seriously, it does not work. And, um, you know how I always start my day. Mm. Boy, do I need it this morning. Whew. Thank you guys for joining this morning's edition of Don't Sleep on the Dallas Cowboys because you literally cannot sleep on the Dallas Cowboys because things happen late in the evening, late night, first thing in the morning. So you want to be up to speed with all that is America's team. I am packing the vehicle. I've been up since 5 a.m. Um, after going to bed about 1 o'clock this morning and getting ready to head to Atlanta, do some great work and stuff with United Way as well as cover the Super Bowl for you guys. Um, interesting thing, Dak Prescott, the power of four, my quarterback, my teammate, and if you talk about him, it's not fair, it's not fair, was talking about Kellen Moore, and here's where you know, uh, like, uh, you, before I get to that, um, you guys know I've been doing this keto diet, okay, basically the premise of this diet is you eliminate the carbs and you eliminate the sugars and stuff, and you end up getting lots of fat, that's why... My coffee's got heavy cream and keto bomb and stuff in it. And it's difficult when you eat out to do a keto diet because everything's so full of sugar and take potatoes and french fries and all that. I have not had fast food. Well, no, I did have a taco salad from Wendy's in the last eight weeks. And I have not had a soda, but I've lost, I don't know if you guys can tell, um, I still got the Dunlop inner tube here. But I've lost like 23 pounds. And that's still eating my mom's cheek, uh, uh, fruit cake, which is a cheat that I'm not supposed to have. I'd probably have lost about another five if I hadn't done that. But what I'm actually doing, um, th this is what I got to take with me, some of the stuff, okay? So I got access to food, so that way we're, we're just going to stay in the house. So that way we're going to be cooking and all that. So I got my cooler so I can make some keto-friendly meals. But here's all my equipment right here. I've got my... Uh, Lights over here, my gimbal system. This one box right here is actually my whole live stream. It is actually a laptop that I can use to live stream, my microphone, my Mevo cameras and everything else all right there, as well as all of my uh, tripods and stuff in there. And, of course, you can't be a true blue Dallas Cowboy fan unless you've got Dallas Cowboy luggage. i got my other bag upstairs i got to go ahead and get into. And uh, we're going to be hitting the road and driving and stuff. And uh, in an SUV down there. But anyway, on to my quarterback, my teammate, um, <coughs> Dak. <coughs> Dak was talking about Chris, excuse me, Kellen Moore. Dak, th this is where you know that Dak is really part of the equation. Much like Tony Romo had an input with the Cowboys. Tony Romo, of course, could talk to Jerry and things like that. Dak said, you know, he's talking with Jerry and stuff, too, and feels like he's got a little bit of influence. Oh, and I got that splinter out, too, last night. It was crazy. This was wild. Um, I had this big splinter go into my hand, and I thought I got all of it out, but I took this X-Acto knife just trying to, to open it a little bit, and what happened is there was a splinter in there about this long, and it literally, like a zip pop, shot out. I was like, whoa. I was like, damn, why didn't I have the camera on there? But it doesn't doesn't hurt like it did. It's still swollen up. I put peroxide and things on it. Put another band in on it. But it's good. So don't worry, guys. I won't get cellulitis, hopefully. Or gangrene. I have to get it chopped off. Um, but he talked with Jerry Jones about Kellen Moore. And it's not what you guys might expect because we had heard last year that, you know, he liked Kellen Moore for being quarterback coach. It was kind of like, you, you think about Dak Prescott and say, you know what, when he's done playing football, maybe he can be a politician because he learns what not to say, okay? You understand that, uh, I don't want to get into the anthem protest, but, you know, he kind of rode the fence enough that he could kind of stay out of trouble as opposed to uh, creating a bunch. Um but he went to the mat with Kellen Moore and believes that he's got it. 
He also, too, didn't burn the bridge with Scott Linehan. And he basically said, you know what, Scott Linehan, you know, first three years of my career, he got me this far and stuff, and I'm thankful for it. Which is kind of cool because, you know, you could easily say, man, the guy was a bum. He was holding me back, man. You know, you look at, like, what uh, DJ Swearinger did with the Washington Redskins, you know. He ended up putting all the dirty laundry out there for the world to see and put the team in a bad light, in which case they had to get rid of him. And still to this day, even though he's gone, it's still throwing them under the bus. Dak doesn't do that kind of thing. Dak is all about the star. And whether or not you believe in his ability and things on the field, you have to look at the guy and say that he is a leader of men and he will not be divisive. And you've got to say he's always going to look out for the star and being a Dallas Cowboy. And that's a big part of leadership. There's a lot of guys that are fantastic and have more skills that can play like crazy. But they never achieve because they don't have the, as I always say, the it factor, the leadership factor, the guy that people want to follow and that guys are willing to sacrifice their body for. We had a quarterback in high school who was a great athlete, but he was a dick. Excuse me for putting it out there, but I'm sorry. He was an arrogant son of a bitch. And I remember the last game of the season. You know, we're seniors. He's a junior and everything else. And we did the good old lookout block. You know what the lookout block was? When the ball was snapped in shotgun, we just turned around and just said, look out. I remember him getting up. I know he had a concussion. That was before we knew Jack about concussions, but you could see the birds flying around his head. But it was like, yeah, payback's a bitch. But I don't think you're ever going to see that with Dak. The guys respect him. They look up to him, and they believe in him. And I believe he's going to win a couple of rings before it's all said and done. And when I compare that to some other guys that are out there, you know, you hear about some of the guys, some quarterbacks that are divas that don't really associate with the players the same way that are, you know, I feel like I'm up here and those guys are down here. I'm not going to name names, but I've heard from people I know that some quarterbacks that are just playing assholes and people hate to work with them. Um, but I don't think that's the case with Dak. Like I said, I, I haven't been fortunate enough to work with Dak Prescott um, one-on-one. I've, I've run into him. I've talked to him a couple of times. Got his autograph a few times and stuff. But I can't say um, personally I've actually had that kind of interaction. But everybody that I know um, says that he's a real deal. Incredible guy. And that was from his rookie year before he even got on the field. So I believe when you do good things good things come back to you. And that's the way I try and live my life. Right now, I need to get all this stuff in the car. Get this cup of coffee down. And hit the road. Um, I'll probably turn the camera on and live stream some of it. My my wife's going to be pissed off because one, she don't want to be seen on camera. Two, she'll say it's a distraction driving down the road. But the uh, nice thing is, I got my wireless headset here. Don't have to touch the phone to talk to you. And uh, we can just turn the camera on and have it just looking at the road, riding down the street. Because it's all interstate, 95 to 85, and boom, you're in Atlanta. So I'm 622 miles from here. Uh, I just hope that one day soon I go to the Super Bowl. I see my cowboys there. Gotta happen sometime soon. Alright. A couple more sips and then it's out in the cold.
Robert Holmes. I'll see you in Atlanta.